When I think of my favorite themes, it's impossible to ignore Mars Mission. Mars Mission initially hit shelves back in 2007 with the first wave of seven kits, which I have here. I'm going to take you through the ups and downs of this first wave, set by set. First up, set 7695 MX11 Astro Fighter. So this is obviously the smallest set of the wave, retailed for $4.99. Back in 2007, came with this fighter, astronaut minifigure, and then our first alien minifigure. So for a $5 set, this is pretty nice. Um, I've got some of the original stickers on here again. Again, my sticker placement still leaves something to be desired. Not much going on. There's no special features about this set beyond this lifting up. You can put the astronaut inside, but it's pretty sleek, uh, pretty pretty well executed. I like these thruster stickers on the back. Um, we've got some trans blue pieces for the guns, and I do think the stickers add a lot of value, and they're not excessive in this case. Not much to say about this set, except for five bucks. Feels pretty good. For the alien figure, it's simply two pieces. That's that's all there is to it. So there's several connections here. We've got um, anti-studs on his feet. His hands actually can hold a bar. Uh, you can also place a bar on the back of his head and through his chest as well. We'll actually see some examples of where they use the connections and sets. That brings us to the next kit, which is 7694. And this is MT31 Trike. Not a very creative name, but I think this is one of my favorite sets. This is directly inspired by a kit from Life on Mars, actually, which is really cool to see. And this retailed for $9.99. With only 95 pieces, I'm impressed with how much space this thing takes up. We get our first huge orange wheels, which are great. Um, and we also get one of these alien transport pods, which are included in basically every other Mars mission set. It's very simple. You can stick an alien through one of these. Um, it's connected by the bar piece through the chest, which I talked about earlier. And you can see on this piece, there's also room for crystals. There's a little indent for the back of his head and there's slots for his feet as well. So he fits very snugly in there. That just slides into here and the trike can ride around. The best thing about the trike is uh, some suspension. Uh, so the thing actually bounces up and down a little bit like that. Um, this is accomplished with a rubber piece in the back that's connected to the two front wheels. And there's also some natural give in these long axle pieces as well, which allows the back wheel to bend ever so slightly. And that is an intentional part of this set. As you can see, this is meant to bob around a little bit so you can go over bumpy terrain. For minifigures, again, we just have an astronaut and an alien, pretty simple. This is a great one. It looks looks really good for 10 bucks especially. Uh, not bad at all, or 15 today. I would pay 15 bucks for this. Finally, a proper alien vehicle. This is set number 7693, ETX Alien Strike. Before we get to the awesome alien vehicle, uh, we should highlight this guy. This is a very humble build for our astronauts, dedicated purely to mining and the transport of a single alien. Uh, in terms of defense, it doesn't look like we have much. I guess you could wield around this. This is a very interesting piece here. Uh, it's a drill just connected to a Technic axle that shows up a lot in these sets. Uh, one really cool sticker in this set is the classic space logo in orange on this two by two round tile. It's great to get a lot of these strange wood screens in trans orange. They'll show up different shapes, sizes, and trans orange throughout this wave. It works for Mars, you know, we're never given any terrain builds on Mars, so I love that they brought some orange earthy color into the color scheme. Then there's the alien ship, which is probably one of the most successful alien vehicles of the wave. It's got quite the dominating presence here. You're actually able to transform this. You're able to close it up into a little bit more of a sleek UFO-like shape. I think that's pretty effective as well. You can seat one alien inside the cockpit. He's actually not connected by anything, which is a little strange. So he is loose in there and he can almost fall out. 
It's hard to connect these aliens to things because of the minimal connections on them. Even the anti-studs on their feet are open on one side so they can slide out pretty easily. But this kit comes with 246 pieces. There's a lot of stuff going on here. These are two pretty substantial vehicles, especially this one. This is one of the largest alien ships in the wave. It does look pretty intimidating coming at you like this with rows and rows of weapons on each side. Yes, a, a very good looking kit. This is definitely one of the best ones, in my opinion, because I think this vehicle looks pretty good, small as it is. Um, it's got some various functions, and this, this vehicle looks great. That brings us to set number 7697, MT-51 Claw Tank Ambush. Of course, we have the Claw Tank and then the Ambusher. So I was actually missing two pieces on this. There's supposed to be additional Bionicle-esque, uh, don't even know how to describe the pieces. They're weird. I'll put a picture up here. This is one of the more simple alien fighters. Again, we have these big curved, bricky sections on the side some guns and it's got room for one alien he's actually connected which is nice because there's nothing else holding him in place on the sides but there's a few different poses you can get with the wings do any of them look good probably not this is probably the best very simple vehicle um, but it's good to build up that army the claw tank is a little more interesting now while a lot of the vehicles in this theme are mining vehicles this is very much an attacking vehicle it is decked out in weapons all over the place. So we have, first of all, we got three missiles. We've got this grabby claw. We've got two laser cannons over here. And there's actually one of these disc shooters that was introduced in Exoforce. And it's got these little discs that fly out like that. Um, they just funnel down through the top here and line up to be shot. Um, yeah, I'm gonna lose these. Quite effective. Um, and these, these here are a very unique piece. A mixing of yellow and lime green plastic in there. They look really cool. We have another really crazy glass piece. This Jedi Starfighter glass piece in trans orange. This is probably one of the worst things about the set. This does not open up very well. Usually one side disconnects. Uh, but you can see an astronaut in there. Up front, we've got two pods. One specifically marked for an alien and another marked for crystals. Treads in orange, these big wheels that we saw in the trike. This all rotates around. There's some fun greebling going on with the gears um, and all these engine parts even around the back, pretty well detailed. This should freak the aliens out a little bit. This, this is an intimidating looking vehicle. So this set retailed for $30 back in 2007, which is about $40 uh, dollars today. And the set actually comes with 374 pieces, which is pretty impressive considering the size of some of these, the big wheels, the treads, the black wings on this, the trans orange glass piece. Um, so quite, quite a good value even today, I think. Another strong set in this lineup. This next set, in my opinion, is the strongest set of the wave. Perhaps of the Mars mission theme overall. This is 7692 MX-71 Recon Dropship. Dropship, yeah, that implies it drops something. And that's the surprise of this set. It actually has a whole nother vehicle that comes out of it. This little guy is probably one of the simplest astronaut vehicles in the entire wave. But the fact that it can be picked up by this thing is pretty cool. It's got one of those drill pieces from earlier, another crazy trans orange glass piece, a room for a guy to sit, all sorts of these hard plastic wheels, and a little radar dish over here. So those rubber pieces actually connect this thing. That's all it's holding in place is two of those side by side clips on there. And I feel quite comfortable that that's not gonna go anywhere. Um, it's, it's really nice, and this swooshes around great. So the Recon Dropship is a really unique shape, and that's what I love about it most. No ship that I can recall that LEGO's produced really looks like this. And the, the detailing is really well done. There's some really great parts in use here. For instance, the landing gear with the 3x3 radar dishes is really unique. That actually holds it up, even though it's got a weird center of balance. 
Uh, another big trans orange glass piece. I think the stickers are used pretty effectively again. I love getting this classic space logo here with the orange for Mars. So this is on a ball joint in the front, so that allows you to get some crazy positions of that. Although I do think it looks best in its default position there. Uh, these cannons totally poseable. We've got one of the spring-loaded shooters here. I'm not going to shoot it. You know what those do. In the back, we've got these really flexible arms. So these kind of fly a little bit awkwardly behind, but I do like how poseable they are. It's one of the biggest of the can't do that. Again, it's one of the largest astronaut vehicles of this wave. I love the, the actual dropship feature. Even if the, the, the ship it drops is whatever, I still think this is a very successful set and super, super cool. I've glossed over it until this point, but the Alien Ship 2 for this set, I think is probably my favorite alien ship of the wave because it's so unique. They've taken the wings that are usually out to the sides and put them vertical. So you get a really, really different chip design that's still very iconically this theme. It's, it fits in so well. Uh, like you, you're seeing all the same pieces, these green antenna, the black pieces with the, the stickers. Really, really unique. And it works so well. I love the, just the curve on this. It's really, really cool. This is a strong set. This is the best set of the way. I'm telling you right now. Love this. You get two incredible vehicles for the price of one. And what is that price, you might ask? In 2007, it was $40, which is about $52 today. 435 pieces. Um, you get a lot of bigger pieces in here. I still think it takes up enough space to feel like $50 worth of stuff. And great vehicles. Can't say that enough. Best kit of the wave, right here. So if that last kit was the best one of the wave, why even continue? But I promise Mars Mission still has some surprises up its sleeves. Unfortunately, this one is probably a bit more of a negative surprise. The pump system from Life on Mars is reintroduced in this theme, which I think is a fun idea. And the designers at LEGO are like, what can we do to make this pump system unique? So it's not just aliens traveling through pods. So they introduced this concept of these basically Nerf bullets <laughs> and it's a giant Nerf gun. Um, and it works all right. It's, it's a huge system though for a, a missile that launched just as far as those little green discs I was shooting out of the claw tank earlier. It's an expensive system. We have ridiculously specialized parts. This is a ridiculously specialized part. This is technically one piece if you don't include this clear connection point on top. It generates the, the push to get these missiles to fly. But if you don't absolutely pound this thing, these things don't go super far. It's a mixed bag. The spring-loaded shooters go so much further and they're so much cheaper to produce than this big hunk of plastic and this relatively large hunk of plastic. I, I admire the effort. I, I like getting this in orange and there's some interesting pieces, but this is not something I can use in a mock. Not very well. This is not something I can use in a mock. Not very well. This not something I can use either. It's very one-dimensional for, for LEGO, which is a system of play, you know? It's it's supposed to be something else, and I, I don't like the one-dimensionality of this. This turret is, is pretty, it's whatever, it's fine. It's got some stickers on it. Off to the side here, we've got an actual mining rig that can slide back and forth with another one of those drill pieces. We get lots of these flexible small tubes in orange, uh, two astronauts, that's about it. We got some missiles as well. Crystals powering the whole thing. Not much going on there. The star of the show, of course, is the mothership. This is something that was essential to this wave, and I think they did a really, really good job with it. The mothership has many, many child ships, uh, which is <laughs> quite fun. So the, the biggest, baddest one of them all 
is this front one, which just is connected by this Technic axle here. This, for its size, looks great. I love the angles that are achieved by this. I, I view this as the leader right here. This is the leadership. Looks really good. It's got so sharp. Uh, that's that's terrifying. Even if it's not bristling with weapons, eh, it's not hurting. It's not hurting by any means. This thing looks fast and terrifying. So that's ship number one. Then there's these two little speeders that can technically break off, each powered by a crystal driven by an alien. Not much going on here, but more ships. Then these look awesome. They're little drones. And believe it or not, there is actually an alien attached upside down through his chest to each of these things. It's connected to the turret, which can move back and forth. These look really cool. Probably not that strong, but I can see these zipping around. Really cool to get this satellite piece in trans neon green. That's really unique. This thing is loaded with stickers. All of these two by two round tiles are stickers, and there's eight of them on the set, three of them on each of these. You're left with this, which is supposed to have a shooter, one of the proper spring-loaded ones. Uh, I forgot the missile, but you get the idea. It's kind of mounted at that angle right there, so you can shoot things. Uh, what's really nice about this, too, is that there's a handle to hold this whole thing up by, um, and that works really well. All of these connect back together. The build feels really solid. Definitely a worthy mothership for this theme. And the fact that it can divide into, what, six different vehicles is pretty sweet. You just need one set to have an entire army at your disposal. The whole thing put together is still swooshable, even though it can be taken apart. This is a strong vehicle. Last and ironically least of the bunch is set number 7690MB01 Eagle Command Base. This set retailed originally for $89.99, about the equivalent of $120 today. 760 pieces, though a lot of those pieces are quite substantial. Again, we're seeing four of the tubes, the pump, and there's a lot of large pieces to build up this base section. We get another alien fighter. One of the smallest size, the same black, huge panel pieces. This one is nice in that the wings can actually bend backwards a little bit um, to really open up a little wider, and then you can push them in a little too. I like the tail section as well. I think for one of the smaller fighters, this is pretty effective. My favorite part of the set though is the rocket. I think the rocket looks fantastic. It's one of the strongest vehicles of the wave. Really, really fun shaping on this thing. It looks pretty smooth. I did a terrible job placing the stickers back in 2007, but that happens. The rocket has some functionality to it. This actually splits apart into two vehicles, so you can view this as an escape pod or something. There's a little surprise on the inside. This opens up, and there's this great little jack pack that you can attach to a minifigure. I think that's fantastic. It looks good, and I love how it just kind of plops in place there. Got an alien transport tube, crystal transport tube, and this can line up with the system. So much like the Life on Mars system, we've got tube transport pods this time around. It's not just for firing this, though this central uh, position actually can fire these missiles. But the, the base itself, I, I'm not going to go on about the base too long. The base is so spindly and it feels and looks cheap. It feels like a very small parts budget was stretched far too thin. The length of these tubes necessitates a, a rather large build. The only part that's habitable is this section right up here. Uh, it's an 8 by 16. Uh, it's basically, there's a lab uh, where you can put the alien and off the elevator and, and analyze it. And that's it. There's like space for two minifigures. And I think that my biggest gripe about this is that this is supposed to be an enclosed interior space, but it does not feel like that at all because all you've got are three windscreens with gaps in between them, suggesting this is inside. And it's not believable. This is supposed to be the entrance and it's the same thing. There's just, there's nothing back here on this floor for 
all the cool shits that this theme has had up to this point. This is such a disappointing set. There's no substance to it. We got a good vehicle. We got a really good vehicle and, and a pretty good vehicle here. And then this scaffolding with some tubes. So the suction feature is fun. We can take out the alien, bring it back here. The alien's right in this tube now. And then we could move it over into storage. But that's it. You can move aliens from here to here and here to here. And if we want to get real crazy, we can put them on that elevator as well. So bring the elevator down. Aliens on the elevator. Move it up here. Manually move it into the lab. We've got another one of these guns, which I won't elaborate on. It exists. Ta-da. The base is whatever. It's the weakest set of the theme, which is too bad, but it's the most expensive. Glad this rocket exists. The rocket makes me happy. Gives them a way to get off the red planet. But this is not a worthy base. Um, ditching the tubes and building something up without them would have been a better solution in this case. And it's too bad that the Mars mission line never gave us another attempt at a base. They stuck to vehicles, which I understand this was probably not super successful as a set. The tube system has not been revisited since 2007. And I think there's some potential, but it needs to be in such a large kit that it becomes too expensive. And they just they just ran out of money here. You know, <laughs> there was only so much they could put into the set before it just became a $300 kit that no one would be interested in buying in 2007. What Mars Mission really brings us is some unique vehicle designs that we did not see before and we have not seen since this theme. I think the highlights for me here are really both vehicles included with the recon dropship. The Alien Scout vehicle and the dropship itself are both really unique um, and really well built. I, I think this is a really strong set, but there's great vehicles scattered throughout. The mothership looks great as well. Even some of the smaller vehicles of this wave, the trike and the astrofighter look great. The rocket too. I think this theme was also super successful in that it kept its characters simple. The aliens, yes, there's there's not much to them, but they're cheap to produce and that means you can get a lot more in each kit. This kit came with five, the base came with four, and I think the same goes for the astronauts too. And so you get a lot of these characters having four in the base and two in the set and two in the set. And it, it's easy to build up these armies, super satisfying. Despite some of the shortcomings, especially in the implementation of the tube system, I will always look back on this theme with fondness. It was a joy to rebuild these kits and to relive some of these memories. And if you can get your hands on some of these, I totally recommend it, especially that recon dropship. 